Hello and welcome back everyone to this live training session on SAP Datasphere training with me Anubhav on YouTube. In the last episode, we talked about SAP Datasphere data builder and business builder layer. In this session, we are going to learn how can you create your first database table in SAP Datasphere and store your data in the cloud in a data warehouse system. If you are new to this video series, kindly check the description of this video to find all the links of the previous videos. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe this video and share in the WhatsApp group of your company so that other team members can also take an advantage of this free training on YouTube. Having said that, let's get started our today's episode. So now we will start with our first practical example of data layer where we'll start creating a table. So there are multiple ways we can create tables in SAP Datasphere using data builder layer. Data builder layer is the data foundation layer where you build the data, yes. So now we start with the table. So what is table? Table is a two dimension structure as we all know. It contains the data in form of rows and columns. There are multiple ways to create tables in Datasphere. So I will show you all the different techniques to create tables in Datasphere. So first I will show you creating a table by a simple CSV upload. So I'll go to here. You see at the moment my system have nothing. It's a very fresh system which we set up in the previous episode. And now I click on this plus button to upload the data from a CSV file. So I can click on that and it will take me to my computer. It will allow me to choose a file from my computer. I click on that and then I will go to my folder where I've kept my file. So here you see I have data kits. Data kits contains data for the UJS for the learning and training purpose. This entire data kit I will be also sharing with all of you as part of study material so that you can download this data kit and you can start building the use cases even more complex use cases in coming days as part of our training so i go inside and today i just use a simple sales order data yes of my company to upload it here so i can click on that i choose the file and of course my first column will be a header yes in excel sheet if your first column is just the description and the name of the columns you can keep this checkbox checked and now you say upload you can see the upload is happening and the data gets uploaded. So in this situation, what computer does, it will automatically create a table for us. Yes. So it will automatically decide the column names, the table name, everything. It does automatically. So this is the benefit what you get when it comes to uploading the CSV. So generally, when you start for the first time, you start with flat files in your company as well. There are currently, let's say, you're going greenfield implementation and at the moment you are not using any data warehouse solution in your company at the moment all the data is maintained in csvs or excel files you can quickly come and upload them now once you come here this is the data transformation screen on this screen basically you can apply some quick transformations on the data for example you want to duplicate the data you want to change some column names you want to combine some data you want to apply uh, concatenation so for example if I want to concatenate this and this I can double click I can click both of them and I have a smart transformation I have options to duplicate delete yes I can apply transformation and you see there are different options like concatenate split extract replace change and filter so there are multiple options which are possible here after you upload the data you can apply simple transformations on the data if you feel your data needs to be cleansed you can cleanse your data right away over here you can also look at data distribution so if I for example choose out of all the sales order how the distribution of my number of sales order are with respect to sales organization so I can come here click this column go to this tab and you see out of all the uh, all the sales orders I have there are three unique values of the sales organization out of total records, there are 313 records for EMEA, 180 records for America, and 7 records for Asia Pacific Japan. Also, you can mark here the key. So you're building a table. 
so a table will typically contain a primary key right so primary key which uniquely identifies every record that is what exactly the, the the table is capable of doing right so you will have here the classification of data type what type of data type it is if let's say the data sphere have selected or chosen any particular data type incorrectly yes you can come back and correct that also here you can force uh, the data sphere to choose or mark one particular column as a dimension yes as in as a you know uh, as a dimension let's say i want data sphere to treat though it's a number i want it to treat it like a string so i can manually come and change that so you see it has automatically detected the most of the data type let's say this one is a date you see calendar icon this one is a is a number yeah this one also detected as a number this one detected as a date this one detected as a number this one detected as a character you see a a that's a character so in case you feel that a particular column and its data type was uh, was inappropriately selected or chosen by data sphere you can always come and modify here so for now i will select sales order you can also see the distribution of sales orders between the ranges and now you can also check the validation rules if there are any issues there are blank data or unsupported data types unsupported characters you know sometimes we get special characters which are not supported by the by the tools or there are null values in a in a key field you can also detect those issues over here now we can click on set as a key you can do this later also in case you forget to choose their key on the screen you can do that on the top you have undo option redo option and transpose so you want to convert a column into a into a row you can always do that with the unpivot option also so now we can click on deploy and the table will get created with this column as a primary key the sales order id of course has to be my primary key i can click on deploy button it asks me the business name and technical name so business name can contain the spaces because this is basically for the purpose of understanding from the business perspective of a table whereas technical name cannot contain in uh, cannot contain a space i can click on deploy button yes i can click on deploy button it will now deploy my table so business name is sales space order but the tech name was sales underscore order you can see deployment of data successful so it deployed the table first and then it deployed the data also so you see the status is deployed so what is exactly happening when you deploy so i'll take you back to the previous episode previous class where i have explained about uh, how underlying how under the hood analytic cloud uh, or a data sphere is working under the hood so what exactly is going on so here is the data sphere so you as a developer have created a table over here defined a table by uploading a csv file is using data sphere so when you do this you got a table the structure defined in a graphical modeling low code no code environment now you say deploy when you say deploy what exactly it does it will go ahead and run a sql command behind the scene because you understand excel i understand excel but computer only understand or database only understand sql so behind the scene it creates a sql that would be something like a ddl command like create table table name yes sales order columns yeah all that it creates and this will be created then in the hana cloud so as a consultant you are using a low code no code environment where you are not writing any much coding you are just using a graphical modeling option to create a table so that way any business consultant who have zero technical knowledge in sql would be able to do that that's a great advantage which data sphere provides us to us yes apart from that creating table there is a lot you can do when it comes to coming creating a table which also we will see it now so once the table is deployed and created now we have an option to basically go ahead and uh, choose multiple settings for the table so i can click this object it opens up for me and i can start editing this object if i want suppose i forgotten to mark uh, i forgotten to mark the the key field so i can now make it key field it's possible 
when you deploy again it will fire a alter table command alter table command yeah so now i have a business name i have now semantic uses what is semantic uses what is the meaning of this semantic uses so this you feature you will see in the views also and this feature you'll see in the table also so here it will help anyone so let's say you build a table you build hundreds of table and then you left the company so when somebody else will come and join your team as a replacement for your work when they look at this table how do they know what is the purpose of this table how do they know so this is one benefit you get one is documentation the second benefit how do you want the data sphere system to treat this table yes because de depending on the type of table the treatment is different yes let's say there is a patient comes yes there is a heart patient comes one heart patient who is a heart patient his blood pressure is very low one heart patient which is another heart patient which whose blood pressure is very high so both are heart patients but they need to be treated differently because the level of blood pressure level of sugar level in the body it depends and the treatment will also change accordingly the medicines will change differently so similarly this patient this table over here how do you want your doctor your data sphere to treat this guy yes. that is what the semantic uses type will decide let's come back now we have got our uh, table tree data type so i will change this to a dimension or i'll change it to fact because this is the sales order data yes sales order data so i'll change this particular table to a fact data very very important next when we come down we can see here sales order id semantic type if it has a label we can choose also the label if you want then we can choose semantic type what is the kind of category this data is what is the category of this data we can change the data type so data type was auto detected by the data sphere system if you want to change the data type you identify from your perspective from your business need that a particular column should have been selected in another data type you can always change that for primary key you can never provide default value but for all the non primary key columns you can provide a default value while inserting the data if the computer does not find uh, does not find the data relevant for that column or it finds a blank then it will automatically in insert the value which you will give here as a default value you can mark a column as a not null yes not null means you cannot leave this column value empty you cannot leave it empty a primary key is naturally not null and unique so that constraint naturally applies to the primary key you can also go ahead and delete columns you can search columns of course you can see the number of columns available which are 70 now you can go to attributes and measures so that is here then we can go to association association is basically a loose coupling of one table to another in the past we used to create foreign key relationship it is very similar to that then we have business purpose very important what is the need of this database table why do you create this database table so by providing this information later on this particular object can be made available in the catalog remember the catalog do not reinvent the wheel so when you build something you want your colleagues to find this object use this object at later point of time in the business you don't want them to recreate or redevelop everything from scratch once again so we can provide a lot of business purpose information which then be visible for the search by your colleagues and your friends and your 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 fellow fellow developers in the company to look forward for your object and not rebuild it yeah not rebuild it then comes this table services where you can specify whether this table will be stored in the memory or whether it will be kept in the uh, the cold store so remember the cold and hot store concept of hana so we can decide whether this will be stored in the in the memory in the in the ram or not so maybe we can switch it on dependent object very important to indicate a data lineage and data uses you can find the dependent objects where this table is being used so let's say if i'm i'm building a big project and i created a table and then after that it was used by several other colleagues in different objects so you want to change now this table and you want to minimize the impact of the change you don't want the table to be uh, table changes to affect a lot of other participants and and causes dump for them so you can always come back and check the dependent objects 
this table depend on which are all the different objects and uh, and then accordingly you can find the impact of change and then maybe perhaps you can have a have a have a meeting with the other colleagues and tell them that I'm planning to change my table kindly be ready to adapt your objects accordingly so this is like a very used list what you used to do in in traditional BW system so that is about the table settings then we, we are good if you want to load more data to the table you have this upload button which we will also see and use it in a in couple of minutes now I'm happy I can save the table but saving table doesn't confirm the changes are deployed to the HANA they are not converted table is just saved the skeleton is saved but table is not yet active yes table is not yet uh, pushed to the database so you see changes to deploy restore deployed version so you always have active and inactive version like in traditional BW so you have changes to deploy which means you saved some changes I changed this semantic type but these changes are not yet deployed now until the changes are not yet deployed it is possible to roll back the change so you can roll back your change back to the last stable state so this is always possible what you traditionally have in SAP BW where you have active and inactive version you can go back to the last active version I don't want to do that I want to deploy now so let's click on deploy it is deploying the deployment process is usually deployment and data loading process is asynchronous you see we will notify you when that process is complete so here this process is basically asynchronous you don't need to wait here until the entire deployment gets over yes so you can continue to do your work and it is asynchronous so after couple of few seconds later on when the deployment gets completely done that then it's going to get you a message automatically yeah that is the the, the beauty of data sphere it is asynchronous many processes are asynchronous so you see it is now deployed so my table has been created so this is how you can create your first table in SAP data sphere with the data you can click this button to quickly view the data available in the table so when you come here you see it is just booting up and loading up on my data so you can see just is loading booting up and loading and in just few seconds yes there you go there you go I've got my data displayed so congratulations you just created your all first right. table so thank you so much for all of you for attending today's session on the topic of SAP data sphere as usual please feel free to subscribe the complete training end-to-end -end on SAP data sphere SAP analytics cloud SAP BTP UI5 Fury or any other technical skill set which you would want to upgrade in this new world of cloud so do not forget to visit www.anubavtrainings.com also shoot us an email on contact at anubavtrainings.com for any of the requirement regarding the technical training in the space of SAP with that Anubav signing out once again thank you so much and I will see you in my next episode